this is a little chat about magic and why it's so important to me and uh, and a little bit of everything that it goes around I think that my I have started in magic because I was totally powerless between the ages three and six and then I started to say no and that's when things started to happen uh, but it happened since when you have somebody who is against you against your free will that means that you have a backup team that does, uh, didn't mean that I was uh, evolved or anything special like that but that happens in those situations when people push you too far and force their needs on you so that might happen to you as well so so it was a quite interesting beginning since before my father and grandfather could find me a priest so that I could make my own choices and uh, before that it was the shaman who had was friend with my grandfather from the civil war in Finland I think it was 1970 something 1917 something like that and then when my father got uh, hit by a grenade in the winter war he helped with his healing so when I was three years old and really sick I had been in a coma for three days I was born with allergies and I wasn't allowed to be in a room filled with fish uh, and you weren't allowed to eat fish and, uh, and my mother was frying fish so that caused an anaphylactic shock in a small kitchen and it caused an anaphylactic shock and uh, they had to bring me down to Helsinki all the way and lay in the hospital and that freaked my grandparents out and they took me and my father and um, but uh, since my grandmother and my mother and they were talking about so they started sending things that my father could sense I think so they reached out to the shaman and uh, he started he just this is what I was told he just started to help me right away and said that he had seen me uh, in the realms before he met me uh, somehow so he started laying out the protection and uh, healing so that I could uh, grow and uh, find my own way. But he also said that you are part of nature girl and the wilderness will always call you. So I had uh, somehow really early on a connect. I had this connection to animals and trees and that was just a part of who I am I guess. And uh, then at six they found uh, this orthodox mystic priest. There, there was one church and there was one priest and he was a military and all those things. So had, he had been in actual war and battle. And uh, all priests did back in the day. It was like God please bless the ammunition and then he went out to war. You, since it's about defense you are attacked that is not like you are going to so there was no qualms about asking God to bless the weapons or the guns or ammunition since you are attacked your homes are being burned people are getting killed so please bless the ammunition so that it's blessed so and uh, since I grew up in the military family so maybe that is some of my characteristics that shows up and my grandfather and I share the same birthday so we have Eva Lia both and um, so that's an interesting thing that we were born on the same day so I think when I become more military sometimes that uh, there is that connection there as well and uh, there have been some weird things that happened to me when I was I can't remember this myself I remember small bits that I told them but uh, when I was uh, four 
My nanny, who was about 25 uh, years old, died suddenly and we were alone at home. So I, did, I, I lived on a farm so I knew what death was, but I, I was alone there so I pulled up a blanket and put it on her and I felt the presence. I felt like when her soul left suddenly and it was like jerked off like that out of her and I got st quite startled and a little bit scared, but then the death itself came back to me and comforted me. And when I told this to the priest and he was of the old school, he said, you met Uriel. So uh, that was between four and at six I dedicated myself to Michael when he appeared to me in a dream and I so Uriel and Mikhail were the ones who started it all and then it evolved from there and I think that the trust to know and then there's the connection of of wanting to do your best for me at least it was to serve Michael since he loved horses uh, in my opinion and also on and horses are the best thing I know so so we so I had no qualms about asking him to protect the horses and so on so it was silly and like a child you do those things and uh, then when I was about 13 14 when uh, in the 80s when everybody was into really the darker side of uh, occultism so I started practicing uh, entering into the Abramelli my friends had done it poorly like the Alistair Crowley way with not my friends really but those who hang around and um, my classmates and people like that that you had a daily connection to and they went off the deep end so of course I started to study and practice the first two steps so I could help them since it became chaotic and uh, they actually didn't do the work they they just took drugs and did the rituals they didn't get up at the times they were supposed to and uh, it was it brought a disaster for them so that was a good learning lesson to me and I did uh, the actual steps except the last two when you uh, bind those uh, demons with the squares, squares. Uh, I was it was just like a stop I had to take care of a sick animal so I didn't it came really um, a farmer was sick and I just had to move and everything was left behind so I didn't have the physical means to complete the ritual since I had to just go. So that was my HGA playing a huge part of that that you are not ready girl not yet. But I learned the discipline from that or I it became a part of my life so I live my life like I'm always in that space of the not gossiping not uh, and trying to treat everybody as fair as I can after my best understanding. Uh, so that was the beginning of that. And then there was these experiments with the key of Solomon. I drew pentacles a little bit uh, on the ground and uh, on the walls or I carved on the wall in a barn a little bit to bringing fertility for the animals we had an old mare who hadn't been able to have a foal and she was missing to having a foal and she was quite old so i just did a, called in upon a angel of shem angel of breeding animals and uh, yes she got the foal so that was a big thing for me that kept me I always remind myself after that since the horse was so happy she had this uh, foal and she could be a true horse once 
so there was the joy of it and uh, but it had a backside my neighbor was breeding rabbits uh, he sold rabbits to families to or to zoos when people had them as pets and accidentally he was so close by and I haven't put up the boundaries really or I didn't know how really so he had so much rabbits that year so all my friends and I we were calling upon hanging up these notes everywhere free rabbits to a good home and trying to find a shelters and places where people would take care of their rabbits so there was a downside to it as well and I think we all do those mistakes we don't really understand what we are doing but it's part of the learning and we learned that hmm, this wasn't really the right thing and that's why I drew, uh, drew my pentacles in a book and I don't put them on a Yes, I have done on uh, metal as well, but that metal is so consecrated, so I keep it, I lit it up, and it isn't affecting the whole surrounding. And that was something I had to learn. And, um, and tattoos, I was actually wanting to get a tattoo in my early teens. And um, the tattoo artist looked at my skin and said, you have a, a people who is dry in skin and um, you have allergies. And I said, yes, and he refused to tattoo me. So that was the end of that. I wanted to have my girl's sigil. So, and now when I'm so wrinkly, I'm happy I didn't do it. Uh, and then it's forbidden in the Bible as well. So it's always that however you look at it and I don't now later in life I don't want to have an entry point for anything on my body it comes from working together and it becomes easier with the years as well so you don't really need that you can call upon Michael once you know his energy, you don't need anything at all and the same with all angels. So it is just that you learn and focus and connect. And um, there is so much that is beautiful with magic and but it always have these growth phases. You learn something and you feel that you got it all together, then comes the stop and then you deepen and you study something else and then it kickstarts off again and it it isn't uh, not as constant as those uh, new books tell you. And uh, I, I know that uh, I've been lost uh, in real life in a, I was in Berlin uh, I was working there in the 90s when the Berlin Wall and that thing Iron Gates and I didn't know my way out and a bad neighborhood so I called upon Angel to help me out to find into a more safe place it was I didn't speak any German except some Latin words I can't say here but they weren't so nice and uh, that was just like that it does work but you should always use your mind first and i can i know when there is there was a really bad hurricane coming so i was woken up by an a, a shen telling me go out and uh, tie up all those things that can um, loosen up and fly away and uh, secure the place. It was in the middle of uh, building up a new roof and the tin that you put on the roof or the metal and uh, if they had flown away they could have uh, hurt somebody really bad if they crossed with a car or something and uh, all those things and uh, 
and that's become a part of me so sometimes I have to have the news since I get woken up that there's an earthquake and we had uh, small earthquakes here and I've been uh, had one uh, in Europe and uh, so on but I don't know why am I being woken up to an earthquake and then I looked up on the news oh that's where I should focus my prayer today so so it's those uh, weird little things that happens that keeps it interesting and uh, And then there's the feeling of that the Holy Guardian Angel is the... That's when you know everything and I just can't say that is the beginning. That, that is... And when people say that I met my Guardian Angel and I'm the greatest tarot reader or the greatest magician... I, I don't really agree with that. That is more like your... Well, some call it a holy demon, some call it a genius and uh, whatever way, but if you're really meeting up with the holy God and angel, it isn't that that you can predict the future for anybody when they are going to die or something like that. The angels are not about. Since all those apocalyptic messages we hear everywhere that the angels are telling this and you should do this, I've never encountered that from them. Then, but then, of course, I also ask the angels to never give me a message if there is something I can do about it. So, if there is a message to be shared, that means that we have the act of free will to make it not occur. So, there's never been those um, kind of messages you see, warnings and uh, things. Demons give you a lot of prophecies. They are, if you look at the really old church, talking about church again here, even if I haven't been in one, I think it was 30, 40 years ago. Uh, it was when my real priest died. And uh, they put so much emphasis on wanting to bring in, they really if we say like Christ, they'd be waiting, hoping and praying for him to return for 2,000 years. And I believe he will return. But I also don't think that humans, he's going to tell humans to act violently against each other and cause... Since when people are in fear, they act on the animal instinct and when they act on animal instincts they steal, they rob, they kill, they are in frenzy, they are in panic. So if people start acting like that it's not an angel or it is absolutely not Christ. When he comes I think everybody will know it, feel it, something so huge. And then there's the thing of the Antichrist, I don't know, but uh, I believe uh, that there is, will become a time of peace with a very false light. I've always had the feeling, even though I, that will appear as light. Somebody who will charm so many into believing that this is all good now. And we have to see past through these illusions. It is like a mass hypnosis in those places where... With hypnosis there is one thing that I... I've gone to churches just sometimes uh, uh, those where they... sing and chant and fall on the floor just to look what they are doing. Since they often the priest has a ring like this and the people are standing watching at the cross and uh, light behind the cross since these are the baptism whatever churches you call them and they stand like this and when you make a quick move like that that's when they drop and that is a simple thing and you get when that pressure uh, thing back here in the neck 
you don't get enough oxygen and the nervous system so you fall very easily for the slightest and then they started speaking in tongues so I guess many some people might be speaking in tongues that is real speaking in tongues but then there's this when they follow each other and the energy of the whole meeting they are doing something together and they believe in it and they hope in that and they are happy and that that is a high they are on a spiritual high and uh, so it's just like a drug like anything else and one uh, other thing I've uh, seen people use to scare people in the occult to make them seem powerful everybody knows about those small birthday candles that you blow out and they ignite why don't people remember that when they watch an occult ritual or if you put a lot of if you put two chocolates in and one is you drop quite a, some uh, incense oil uh, concentrated oil on it or something when it ignites it will throw up a flame and uh, so when they say oh it started to burn with a full flame now we have a presence that the incense is burning with a flame instead of smoke that is a very simple trick and then there's this common thing when you have like a mist or a veil and you have a portrait behind let's say and you have let's say a, a small little fountain something that creates water mist and the mist is moving and water is every color so it is like the rainbow effect so everything becomes alive and you feel that you are in the astral realm you look at a painting or a statue and it becomes alive and incense smoke in front of a painting or a mirror does the same thing that you get this movement that it is alive and something is moving when you look into it and uh, it's so very often used in all meditative gardens and things like that since it works but my question is is this real that's why I don't practice any of it I want to feel and see without any manipulation if something happens and most of the days I do my rituals I can feel a small lift in my heart I just do them and that's it there is not always this connection strong connection but you do it anyway and I don't expect it to be since I, the only thing I need to be is that what I say is being heard so I'm like a lawyer banging on the door can it bring it up to the highest court bring it up bring it up bring it up and I'm knocking on the door please take this up and so so it doesn't have to be so fancy at all another times when you are really low or have witnessed something horrific and uh, you start I use music for that so I start with let's say something like heavy metal or something that is my real Martian beat and that so I enter in from Mars and then I start to climb up to lighter and lighter and uh, sometimes I only reach to a beautiful melody other days I might shoot up to Agnes Day quite easily that's my favorite and that's when I I play it only when I feel it so within my heart then I just that is Agnes Day nothing else and other days I can listen to some beautiful music and climb a little bit and be still in the light without any trying to so it is different each day so the main thing is that you get the tools to climb up from the depths and higher and and whatever there is always adjustments needed to be made so make it your own and uh, many said that it's demonic to play heavy metal I don't think so there are some things that reminds me of uh, in the real what is it death metal it gives me a horrible migraine but I love the drums and the beats since it, my heart starts to beat according to the music and then I make 
play something silly like uh, some happy melody or something to get it going and then it to get uh, let's say like um, they made that Rasputin song now the cra cra crazy between and that sort of thing it made me laugh so that was one of the middle things and then I work up sometimes to Anna Bekoa or something like that and other it might be a beautiful classical melody like Cherubim or something else but unless I feel it within my heart I don't put Agnes Day on that is very sacred to me and some people play Ave Maria and uh, or have other the Orphic hymns and there are so many and uh, and then I met many who say that they only listen to, uh, listen to the chants and by by something chants and the orthodox chants and they are so so they always say they don't listen to any other music and since we all have the lower self the higher self and then we have the holy guardian angel so I think it's better to be honest that when I when they hear me playing heavy metal then she put on the earplugs and they know, ah, that's where she is today. And then I work myself up. So they, so why do you deny and lie? You can't go into a ritual with lying about how you are since the angels see right through you. And sometimes I have played uh, Heaven and Hell of Black Sabbath to let the rage out and then I build up from the air, take a pause, lift my mood, focus, and then I raise myself up so I'm so I get release of the anger or whatever pain it is, and or in a stable mood. Let's say I listen to some happy music, calm down for a bit, do, and I often do other things. I might vacuum clean when I listen to happy music and. Then I are in a happier place since I vacuumed and uh, and then in the after that it then I enter into a new try to reach out and then it goes smoothly up. So it's different every day. But the main message is that if whatever you feel is sacred that is the sacred thing and I recently learned I started to talk about the angels of the 22 let the name a lot since I started actually working with them every week since uh, the start of the war in Ukraine so now I just feel that I I long to do it once a week First it was, yes I do the Nokia ritual, I do my Shem and I do the Archangels, so that is that and then I do for other people as well. And all those things, so it, why should I add on? And so, suddenly it is that when I read through the whole, I um, really think of the letters, the Hebrew letters there and I feel like that my soul start to spin like this upwards so now it started to, to feel like automatic that when I read the songs my I'm spiraling <laughs> to connect in a, and the, that is a completely new experience right now Aniel has been helping me to finding grace uh, for a couple of months now so they are teaching me something new here so, so it isn't all about magic and manifesting, it's more about what you feel inside, what becomes meaningful, since that changes often. And there are so many people needing help out there right now in this minute. So it doesn't matter really what exactly you do, just do it from your heart. Um, and the angels are so willing to help anybody who wants to help others. So that is, 
and they are so present and close right now. So, since they answer for prayer screams of help, that's their office. There are angels who has the office of answering all over the world. So, if you're starting out and you do it for somebody else, you're aligning with them and you, they, you start to get noticed by what you do, what you're trying to do in real life. If you have the position to sign checks, say a player pray that the check ends up in good hands, that it doesn't be used by criminals and get lost on the way like it often does. And if you do it on man-to-man -man basis, that you help somebody, that is good. Whatever you can do, if somebody is frightened about the news, give them a word of comfort. And you can ask uh, any angel to help that they have lesser that works in. You don't have to just connect and uh, do and they will start noticing you. And so there's no ritual needed for that kind of thing. They are ready and they are waiting. So... Um, Something is going to change. I, I can, and I know that um, since I'm Mars and Venus, and I feel that there is something going on there, and I think that there is so, so whatever way you can connect to help each other. Since nothing is set in stone, but the more we act and try, the more help we get down here on Earth. So it is um, many things that it is just like that since I haven't used the internet before I started this channel, except for writing a couple of emails on my work. Uh, so there is that, that we did that with, by connection to the angels when we worked in, uh, like I had friends who did the um, helped refugees in Africa, and I had one who was in Haiti, and so on, so that we didn't really have phones and connections. So we just built it up with, oh, I sent the angel with a message to him, and hope he's all right, or she's all right. And, and we felt that we could connect all over the world without the internet. So, so that was a simple practice that is basically on, laid upon that, that you are heard, and they send the message that somebody will feel in their heart and you can send help all over the world. And uh, the angels hear you, it's up to the divine court, but uh, usually when uh, there is a real need, you get the help there. So I guess that is all for now. And, uh, and uh, since now the security issues has gone up, the situation with Russia, so I'm thinking of maybe inviting somebody else to my channel who can stand in the box. Since in Sweden at least every time there is a threat and something internet shuts down. Like on New Year's Eve it's, uh, it was usually both telephone lines and uh, internet shuts down since there is so much traffic going on. So for security reasons that the military access, the ambulance, the fire departments, they have access. So they shut off all the internet. And I live in, since I live in here with a lot of, uh, we are overcrowded in this uh, area just now since they, they have big families, the refugees who came here and um, so the houses were built to, uh, like my flat is built for maximum two persons. And we have uh, 15 to 21 persons living in the apartment size like mine. And uh, the bomb shelter rooms, I'm not even going to enter into those. Uh, there is no... If you don't like your neighbors, don't enter into a small bomb shelter where 14 people can stand and it's overcrowded. In that case, I'm better standing up here 
sending up a prayer so I won't be entering any bomb shelters uh, in this building. I'm quite... I worked against drug use with the young in the past so and we have drug dealers living in this building so putting us together in there it isn't always the best idea I can be friends with them but they they don't like me since some of the youngsters they stopped buying from them so that's why they don't like me I don't run off to the police and police don't do anything anyhow unless you are uh, really high up they don't arrest you so there's no point in calling the police I act on my own and and we have this uh, had this way of we help people without notifying police or any departments or we just sent help so they could live in another town somebody took them in and they could be clean there and maybe find a job and that way so we didn't evolve anybody. Since once they get stuck in the system you can't get out and if it's your only offense that you've been trying out things you don't want to have the stamp on your head that you're an addict since in, after that you only get jobs for addicts. So that's been one of my why I was anonymous, I wasn't anywhere near. I, and I worked in construction at that time. Since as I worked in construction, I could choose what you to bring in and teach how to work in construction. So, so that's why I started working in construction. <laughs> so it's been all these things that the AGA told me that here I was horse breed, a horse trainer, veterinary assistant. Then I stopped completely with that after the accident and I moved to a town and I start a new life with, as a construction worker and heavy machine. I, I was used to heavy machinery from the farm so I had the, all the licenses to drive the trailers, the lorries, the digging, diggers, caterpillars or whatever they are called and so I could teach it. So, have a magical, magical day. And if somebody else is interested in being, uh, link, uh, being up in the square, administrators of this YouTube channel, what it is, please let me know and uh, tell me. So, since uh, here it happens that if I'm off internet and can't I have access to internet since the library is closed and that was where the public internet was, then I can't upload and when it's laid dormant for three months they shut the whole uh, YouTube channel down. And I'm strategic and from a military family so it could be good if somebody else in a different country could come in and just check it out that it is alive to keep it going or maybe post their content as well. So this was a weird little chat again. But you are so special and precious to me, all of you. And I'm sending you so much magical blessings to you all and whatever religion, whatever it is. You go out there and have a magical, magical day. Bye for now. And please let me know if you're interested to coming into this YouTube thing. Bye now.